Everybody, welcome back. It is soldering station time. Thanks to Kai Wheats. Today we're looking at the KOT 936 60 watt soldering station. Let's get right down to business. But before we get down to business, let me just say a big shout out and thank you to Kai Wheats for sending it in for this review. KOT 936 from Kiwis. Yes, this is a 60 watt soldering station. 936 ships in this brown box with the Kiwis logo. Soldering station gives you a pretty good idea of what we have. Our soldering iron holder. Take a closer look at that in a second. We have a stand. This is kind of the cool thing to this soldering station. Of course, we have our standard soldering iron. We have some of those handy dandy clips for holding, you know, a second set of hands. And what is this? Oh, by George, it's a magnifying glass. More of those wonderful hands. Actually, no, that looks like it's a stand for the magnifying glass itself. Here's those 900M tips I was talking about. We get five of them here, the most popular sizes, but uh, yeah, you can really get tons of these. They come in all shapes. Finally, we get some really El Cheapo soldering. Uh, 0.8 millimeter uh, da -da -da -da, lead free solder. Flux 2.2% in the core, but eh, I doubt I'd be using that. I'm pretty particular with my solder. Oh, we do have as well a brass sponge to clean the tip, and that looks like it. Oh, let's put this baby together. Ah. Oh. Oh. Main soldering iron goes in just like so. Five pins, and that's it. Nice and firm. Right. Hey, looking good. I love the black color, and uh, overall, pretty solid looking on the exterior. I've left out that magnifying glass just because, uh, you know, it would go in the back like so. And I mean, I think it'd be helpful for, for some people, but uh, in this case, I'm just kind of bothered with it. But yeah, you do have that magnifying option if that turns your crank. Now, of course, that base is entirely optional. It doesn't have to be sitting over here, but what it does, it keeps it up about a half an inch or so from the surface. So if things tend to get hot and you're worried about, you know, ruining what's underneath, the base makes a lot of sense. And as well, it also keeps off those stray bits of solder that inadvertently always end to drip up all over your work surface. And I mean, let's face it, when you have a clean work surface, it just tends to make life a little more exciting. What do you think, girls? Okay, I'll take it that was a yes. <laughs> I love my job. Another cool design feature is the fact you have these inlets here, these little louves right across both sides of the base station. And it's not just for looks. Hey, it makes it look even better, doesn't it? it has a nice cool 
design, but um, there's actual airflow uh, here as well. So it's going to help make this a cooler operating system inside the unit. And that is definitely a good thing for long term wear. The soldering iron holder made out of metal. Yes, very, very nice. Not plastic, metal, and it's pretty heavy duty as well. So rest assured, uh, a little bit of safety here. Uh, nice, nice feature. I just can't stand those plastic resin style soldering iron holders. Just, uh, you're playing with fire. And uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Anyway, good stuff. The soldering iron itself has that ceramic cartridge uh, inside like so. To replace those tips, really simple. Just screw off the top, put the tip over, and that put nice and pointy. This is a really good tip for those fine uh, SMD style jobs. Five tips in total included with this soldering station, so it should get you going uh, for most of your soldering needs. Has the Kylie yes, D well, safe, so it says has that silicone uh, inlay here. Now it tends to droop for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure why, but anyway, uh, gonna keep that grip a little bit colder when you're getting uh, into those high temperatures. All in all though, uh, yeah, your standard fair. Whoa, it just came right off. That's a little annoying. So I don't know why it's doing that. But anyway, people like their um, foam though when it comes to soldering. So you've got that option as well. You have your little brass inlay here, which I prefer. And um, hey, best of both worlds. I had no doubt that this was grounded properly and indeed it is. So no worries about that. Good job, Kaiweets. Pretty heavy unit. Um, yeah, that nice PVC enclosure, but uh, it's a heavy it's unit. An analog style, uh, real stat. Not digital, obviously, analog, but um, you know, call it old fashioned, call it whatever, but it gets the job Try done. Try a little bit of soldering out, of course, just to see how well it performs. Um, that power button, by the way, is on the side which I like better than being at the back. And take note that the cord here is permanently attached to the base. So something to uh, to take a note of. I mean, uh, it's not a big deal, but there you go. Hey, this is rated for the North American market, 120 volts. I'm gonna turn the unit on. Now let's just see how quickly it can get up to temperature. Right now we're looking around 19 degrees, which is spot on for the lab. Here we go. It is turned on. And I will set it up to 700 degrees, which is around 400 Celsius. So here we go. About 375 Celsius is what we're looking at. It is definitely climbing. And speed wise, it's definitely not as fast as uh, some of the other uh, microchip style models, but uh, hey, you know what? Fast enough for most people, I'm sure, hitting around 300 degrees Celsius now. That light is flashing on and off on the unit, as you can see, just letting you know that it is still heating up. I think that's what it means. I've got to double check that manual. Very sparse in the manual, but... I believe it is still heating, or does that mean it's reached the temperature? I gotta find that out, that's kind of important. Okay, sitting at around 350 degrees Celsius. Still climbing a little bit on the slower side. So we're sitting around 375 according to the real stat. Um, yeah, so it's off, off about 15 to 20 degrees, give or take. But really terribly, not, you know, nothing, nothing major. All in all, took a couple minutes, but uh, hey, we got there after all. Good stuff. This is a power board for a Revitive uh, circulation booster, um, fixing up for a friend and uh, yeah, for his mother-in-law. Um, it's been a little bit on the problematic side, still a work in progress, but let's just see how it is at uh, doing a little bit of desoldering. Ideally, I would use a little bit of flux to get it out. 
but I'm not going to. Look at that just coming off ever so nice. So you can tell the uh, heat is really coming to that tip where it's supposed to be and it's making for a very easy uh, removal here. Had issues with my uh, soldering, uh, desoldering system lately. Not very happy with it. Um, should probably do an episode on it, but uh, yeah, for what I paid, uh, it's been a real turd, but anyway, I'll touch on that. So that came off very easy. I'm gonna uh, try putting a new one back on. After using this for a little while, I can tell that the um, tip does get a little bit hot, even with this silicone uh, inlay here. My, my fingers are, are a little on the warm side, so uh, wish this was a little bit thicker, because uh, it's not doing the greatest job at keeping my fingers cool. All right, look at the heat being generated on that tip. Wow, that is nuts. Um, yeah, so that's where your fingers are supposed to be, but you can tell that is just really, really, really hot. So hopefully we can do something better, Kaiwitz, in terms of, uh, yeah, that protection here, because, man. Anyway. All right, let's take a look inside, and looky, looky, we have a massive transformer. What's covering that transformer? Well, it's the cover, silly. Um, yes, so those cutouts are actually designed to help vent the system. Having a transformer, things are gonna get hotter than say a switch mode power supply by a long shot. So having these little air outlets or intakes, however you look at it, definitely gonna help keeping the insides cool. Wow, what a difference. Look at the size here of this transformer. And here's a soldering station that has no transformer. Man, oh man, what do you think costs more to fabricate. Yeah, definitely the Kaiweets model. Another big advantage to the transformer as well was the fact that this will not be moving all over your workspace. These are heavy, they're solid, they're going to stay in one place where something like this, believe you me, you can move it all over your work area just by dragging that soldering iron up. A, a real pain. Anyway, looking inside here, you can see really not much. We have that one little PCB uh, and that is it for the control board for the uh, soldering station itself. Um, really not much. I mean, <laughs> that transformer is followed by a bridge rectifier uh, and a smoothing capacitor. The DC voltage comes out and you know, it changes the incoming AC voltage and uh, yada, yada, yada. So the pretty basic by design. Well, look at that. We have that calibration feature here. Now, I didn't go that route just because it's pretty well in spec. I I'm not going to bother playing around when I'm 10, 15 degrees. Uh, no, I'm happy. 100 degrees, different story. But you can calibrate it right there. And that hole leads into the abyss. No, it's a, another trans, another part, a variable pot resistor here. So you can play with your temperature until you have it matching with the dial set. So that's that's cool. It's nice to have that calibration feature on your soldering station. Now look at that. Look at that little piggy. Yes, it's a pigtail fuse over here protecting you from all sorts of nasty surges um, right there. Now, it's the type that it's in there permanently. It would have been better, I think, to have a, a replaceable fuse. Hey, it's replaceable. Don't get me wrong. But you got to desolder it. And if this is your only soldering station... Yeah, you're kind of fudged. But nonetheless, we do have a fuse, and that is a good thing. There's the on-off power switch. Looking good. And I gotta say, really nice, big, beefy screws here on that transformer. Overall, I've got no complaints. Very simple by design, but uh, you know, a well-built little unit. Okay, let's put it back together, come back with my, yeah, you know, those closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Kiwi's K0T936. Hey, hey, I don't need that. This is a keeper. Yeah, this is a really nice, solid soldering machine that won't get any marks for, let's say, uh, innovation per se, but it is still a solid unit. Used to be a commercial a long time ago, and there was a little old lady, bless her heart, that used to say, where's the beef? Well, you know where it is here in the Kaiwitz K0T 936. That massive transformer is going to give you a long, long, happy, healthy life. And along with that beefy transformer, you get some pretty solid, reliable, performing goodness. Hey, and that is a nice thing to have in the days of a dime a dozen Triac-style soldering stations. 
lots of weight, so you're not gonna push this baby around. No way, Jose. Hey, that constant flashing light letting you know that you're up to temperature is definitely a handy dandy feature. I do wish the manual was a little more involved, pretty sparse. Analog style might turn off some people who want that fancy frazzled digital display but hey if that is not your cup of tea and you don't mind kind of doing it old school Kaiweeds has you covered check the links in the description below if you want one of these bad boys and don't forget you're gonna get that discount courtesy of keep on testing the Kaiweeds KOT 936 gets a solid 3.5 out of 5 stars Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.